Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another year of Marion Harding High School football. This is the 2016 football season, and we're going to do something a little different this year at the beginning of each ball game. We're going to do something that I like to call Prexy Conversations, where we talk to people who are important not only to Marion Harding High School, but to Marion City Schools in general. And with us tonight as our very first guest, we have none other than the brand new principal of Harding High School, Mr. Forrest Trisler. Forrest, Hi. how you doing tonight? Todd, I'm great. Thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, very, very excited to be your new principal here at Marion Harding High School. All right, so we'll just launch with a couple questions here. You ready Let's for them? Let's All do right. it. All uh, right. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Tell the people in Marion who Forrest Trisler is, where you come from, some of your experience, and how you ended up in Marion, Ohio. Sure, sure. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, went to uh, Wittenberg University. Uh, taught high school English at Tecumseh High School for eight years. Was an assistant baseball coach, a varsity softball coach. Helped out with powder puff football as well, and uh, really just did anything I could to uh, work with students uh, to help them have a great high school experience. From there, I went to Dublin Scioto High School as an assistant principal, and then on to Dublin Jerome High School as assistant principal for the past two years. And now proud to be a Prexy and uh, thrilled to be a part uh, of, of the history and the future uh, of Marion Harding High School here in the Marion City School District. All right, so being from Cincinnati, you got to be a Reds fan, Huge right? Huge Reds fan. What do you think Huge of them trading Jay Bruce? That's rough. It's rough. <laughs> it's been a tough season, but, uh, you know, the Reds will be back. They're rebuilding and, re and, and rebooting. Well, you always got the uh, Bengals, right? They've been Absolutely. playing some good football. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, share with uh, the audience out there how um, your first couple of weeks at Harding High School have been. It's been great. Um, really, the, you know, the first couple of weeks, uh, you know, since, since August 1st, uh, been there uh, every day building relationships with staff, students, uh, parents, the community members, and uh, the, the Marion community has been very, very welcoming of me and uh, very excited to be here as your new principal. Are there um, any new programs or anything going on at Harding High School that people need to know about? We've got a number of things going on. We've got, uh, obviously, Gear Up uh, and the Prexy Signing Day that happened last year, and uh, uh, that is growing. The Diploma Pro Plus program, really a, a fascinating uh, program to me as far as helping students graduate uh, and then also helping them, uh, giving them opportunities to earn additional certifications that can help them through uh, life in general. Uh, year 13 is starting up for us where we'll be uh, uh, having uh, uh, students get additional support once they graduate for a year after graduation. Uh, and the... Uh, um, uh, GPS program uh, where freshmen will be able to earn an associate's degree uh, as well as a high school diploma in their four years starting with this year's freshman class is a wonderful opportunity. So you're saying that this year's freshman class will be able to graduate from high school with an associate's degree and a high school diploma? Yes sir, uh, approximately uh, uh, 36 students are enrolled in that uh, and uh, will be able to do both uh, by the time wow. they graduate. And that started this summer, correct? Started this summer, and they had to pass the compass test uh, with at least an 80% uh, or, 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 an, or an, a score of 80 uh, to be eligible. And uh, like I said, 36 uh, young people uh, working on their college wow. degree already. That is fantastic. Well, folks, that's going to wrap up our first Prexy conversation here. I want to thank Forrest Trisler, our new high school principal at the Marion Harding High School. This is going to be an exciting year. And uh, Forrest, I'll let you sign out here. Todd, thanks for having me on. Uh, looking forward to a great year with your students uh, and, and athletes here at uh, Marion Harding High School. Can't wait. Uh, let me know how we can help you at Marion Harding High School. Thanks. Okay, boys and girls, what do you think it means to be proactive? Alex? Being friends. Being friends. Kayla? Being nice. Being nice. Be kind. Uh, when somebody's fighting, do you tell them to stop? Do the right thing. Have control of your actions and your words. everybody and welcome back to another fine season of Marion Harding High School Prexies football. This is the 2016 season and uh, I think it's safe to say that high school football is back in session. You know, you can hear the bands, you can smell the food grilling. I mean, it's pretty exciting, Coach Kaplinger. What do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing quite like falls in the state of Ohio. It's madness, fever pitch up here. And absolutely, and if you notice tonight with me, 
Coach Lindsay is not with me tonight. He actually had to have his uh, back worked on, had some back surgery. So with me tonight is Mr. Corey Keplinger, social studies teacher at Harding High School, also soccer coach and wrestling coach. You excited about this game tonight, Coach Keplinger? Oh, absolutely. The presidents are coming in looking for their first win at Harding Stadium against an OCC opponent since 1998. That's that Dublin Scioto team your senior year, I believe. Yeah, it has been a long time since the Prexies have beaten OCC team, and should be noted that the Prexies started off their season last year with this same Mount Vernon team and were beat 55-19. to 19. That night, the Prexies just didn't show up to play, but I think tonight the Prexies have a shot. Here at Harding High School, we've always prided ourselves on whenever we have large senior classes of having a very good football team, and this year the Prexies have a senior class of 20 young men. Coach Keplinger, is there anything that you can tell us about these seniors at Harding High School? Do you have any of these young men in class, any, any of these kids that you know and you know real well, you can give these people at home an insight to the fine young men that they are? Uh, absolutely. A couple that come to mind, I have Robert Abrams, had him in class for three years now. Uh, I know the kid runs the ball hard. Uh, T.J. Jefferson, he's quick, man. He is very he's quick. quick. The, the kid can run. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and uh, on top of that, on the other side of the ball, Mount Vernon, I know they have a very good linebacker, uh, number six. you got to watch out for him tonight. And they're going to come at us with a 3-2-5 um, defense, and they're going to line up in a pro set. We're going to see a lot of ISO, a lot of trap, a lot of stuff like that. So that being said, folks, uh, we're excited to start the season here. So let's uh, get ready for some football. We'll be back with the Prexies versus the Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets here at Marion Harding Stadium with a telecom production. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's contest between the Marion Harding Presidents and the Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets. I am uh, Todd Schneider, and with me tonight is Coach Keplinger, social studies teacher, soccer coach, and wrestling coach at Marion Harding High School. How you feeling about tonight, Coach Keplinger? Ready to get going here, Coach Schneider. Absolutely, absolutely. The Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets won the toss and elected to kick off. So Marion Harding High School will start off the 2016 season on offense. Back deep for the presidents, I believe we have Nicholas Middlesworth and TJ Jefferson. All right, folks, here we go, 2016. Is about to begin. Oh, and they elected to kick it low. All right, we got on top of that. Here we go. The press is coming out on offense. That was Tariq Harris on the onside uh, recovery there, folks. And you know, when a team starts out with an onside kick like that, that's kind of a little bit of a uh, little bit of trickery there, huh, Coach Keplinger? Absolutely, but it's feast or famine. Great field position here for the Presidents. Well, if you look at this, the Prexies come right out. They must know the play. We have three up top there. The Prexies start out in trips. We have Ryan Sayer in shotgun. Fakes a swing pass. We try a little screen there right off the bat. Uh, ball was thrown a little low there to TJ Jefferson. We have Bryce Starner checking out of the ball game. Looks like the Yellow Jackets are lining up in a 3-2-5. They have three down linemen, two linebackers, and then everybody else is kind of uh, in coverage there. Prexies line up again in a uh, stack trips. Prexies try a little trap play there, folks. Uh, once again, when you're watching football, if you watch the guards, lots of times they'll tell you what's going to happen there on the offensive play, and that was nothing more than a trap. So, Coach Keplinger, we got third and long here. What do you, uh, what do you think the Prexies are going to do here on third and long? Uh, if I had a venture a guess, I'm going to T.J. Jefferson in space here. <laughs> T.J. Jefferson in space? Well, Coach, I think you might be right as the Prexies come out here in doubles. And we got a Prexy wide open. And Bryce Starner wishes he could have that one back. He had pay dirt if he gets that one there, Coach Schneider. Oh, absolutely, Coach Keplinger. He's uh, still in the end zone. 
not a real good series there to uh, to start off. But you know, Coach Keplinger, uh, these kids got a lot of jitters. You know, they've uh, they've been out practicing, they've been working their tails off, and now they finally get to go out there and put it on the field. I mean, anytime you step out on the uh, field for the first time of the year, you're gonna have jitters. You know, absolutely. Been a long summer. They've been waiting for this one for a long time. You know, uh, far be it for me to. Uh, Wonder what the refs are calling, but I don't know about you, coach, but that sure looked like roughing the punter. But most certainly, though, the Prexies are going to have to make sure they protect their punter a lot better than that. And that was Ryan Sayer there on the punt. Number two, Ryan Sayer on the punt. Looks like that was down at the 20 by Nick Middlesworth as well. So first and 10 for Mount Vernon from their own 20 yard line. All right, Mount Vernon comes out here in a little pro set. They have flat backs in the backfield. Once again, folks, watch the guards. They'll generally tell you where the play is gonna go. That's nothing more, folks, than a good old fashioned ISO. Basically what happens on an ISO play is you just get bodies on bodies and the running backs just up in the hole. I talked to Coach Jared Slater during the week. He told me to look out for Mount Vernon's physical running game, so expect to see quite a bit of that this evening. Absolutely. I know last year uh, Mount Vernon kind of had a little bit more of a spread offense, but somewhere along the line they must have decided to change their personnel to uh, a little more of a power running game. We have doubles up top here. Oh, there we go. We have a guard pull, and the Prexies are not being fooled. Looks like Tyreek Harris, the first one to get there in the backfield, a tackle for loss. That was Tyreek Harris, holy smokes. It's good to see that young man out there getting some playing time. He's a fantastic young man, involved in a lot of different things at Harding High School, Coach Keplinger. One of those kids that does a little bit of everything. So we have third and seven here, Coach. What do you think Mount Vernon's gonna do? That's a great question. I haven't seen enough game film on them, but it does seem like a passing down to me. <laughs> yeah, if I was a bet man, I'd say we're probably going to pass here. Yep, little play, play action, action pass. Oh, oh, intercepted by number 11. Number seven. 11. That was Daywalk Smith on the pick. Man, he played that perfectly. Coach sat right there on the flat. Stepped right in front of that, almost hit pay dirt. There we go, Prexies. That's a great defensive play. Nice discipline there, didn't bite on the play action, and the Presidents will take over in the red zone for the second drive here to start. Well, and you know, Coach, uh, sports of any kind, whether it's soccer or wrestling or football, is very much a game of momentum, and uh, I think it's safe to say the Prexies have momentum right now. Absolutely, let's see if they can capitalize with this opportunity. All right, Ryan Sayer under. We got big number 42, none Colin other than Hill. Colin Hill in the backfield. Sayer drops back. Bryce Starner. Oh, man, he almost had that, folks. I tell you what, Coach, if this was the NFL, I think I'd throw the red flag and I'd go to the booth because I thought he drug his toes. It sure looked like it from here. Uh, Starner, I'm sure after that last drive, hungry to get that touchdown in a tone. Oh, absolutely. You know, Starner's got to be hungry after that first drop. That was a great effort by that young man, but alas, it was not to be. However, we still have the ball on the 11-yard line, so uh, let's watch what the Prexies do here. Little T.J. Jefferson on the stretch. <laughs> coach, I think that was a pickup of about, let me see where he, about seven yard pickup there, coach. Yep, I can't talk about that kid's speed enough. He, great job there getting to the outside and making something happen. Well, and you know, Coach, uh, Mount Vernon, they pursued that well, but T.J. Jefferson just has something that uh, trumps everything. You can't coach speed. That's you that big 10 speed. speed. Absolutely. You can't coach speed. I mean, those of you guys who just got done watching the Olympics, I mean, holy smokes. Did anyone watch Usain Bolt? Good Lord, that man can run fast. Third right, and so three for go. the president here. In the backfield coach. Coach Wessler doesn't like what he sees. Calls time out there.
Pre Prexy's called the first timeout of the half. Needs to be meticulous on this call here, Coach Schneider. Uh, reminder, the presidents do not need to score on this series. The first down will do to get a whole new set yeah, of yeah, chances Coach, here. You're exactly right. We don't need a first down on this. But here's my question to you, Coach. You think this is two down territory? You think regardless of what happens here, the, the Prexies are going to, you know, even if they don't get the first down, you think they're going to go for it twice here or maybe settle for a field goal? A uh, wise man once told me to play to win the game. Oh, there Take we your go. chances. You got to play to win the game. Exactly, and uh, three points, unless you're Jim Tressel, generally are not going to win you the ball game. Please stop by the concession stand to see your favorite Garfield staff members. Mary and Harding would like to welcome the Garfield Elementary students that are here to see us tonight. All right, Coach Wessler sends the youngsters out on the field. Looks like they have the play. And through the game here, you know, we're going to do our best at making sure we call out some of the names of the offensive linemen. We got P.J. Roberts at center, number 72, senior P.J. Roberts, who will be snapping the ball to young Ryan Sayer all night long. Play action here. Sayer bootlegs out to the left. Oh, we got a touchdown. However, there's a flag thrown. Folks, that was none other than a bootleg pass there, a little play action pass. Ryan Sayers has been running that play to perfection since he was a freshman in high school. Okay, let's wait and see what the call is here. Hopefully the Prexies didn't have an illegal man downfield. Covered receiver is the call there. Quave Booker, who made the catch, was covered by somebody to his outside and went downfield to make the catch. Well, you know, and that's one of those uh, that's one of those strange rules that most people don't know about. But I got to say this though: kudos to the uh, to the refs for calling that. So, people who are in the stands or who are watching this at home that may be angry about that call, that is in fact a, a legit call. So here we go, coach. I mean, we got it. We got to go for it again. Tell you what, folks, that was a beautiful bootleg play, though, right there. I tell you what, like I said, Ryan Sayers has been running that perfection since he was a freshman. Absolutely. Third and eight from the nine-yard line oh, here. Looks like the we have motion here. See if we'll see a sweep. Looks like some type of jet sweep. Jetson on the sweep. Picks up a, a block. Great block by Colin Hill. Coach, I think we might have got the first down there, Coach Keplinger. Hold on. Let's. Whoa, nope, close. nope. I still see the four. Okay. Wonder if the Prexies will line up a little eye formation here. It does look like four down territory, tor territory, Coach Schneider. And they were not ready, and Ryan Sayer gets under center. Coach, I'm at a bad angle here. You think they got the first down? Judging from Coach Brady's impression, yes, but we shall see. Well, I think I just saw the ref point the other way, Coach. Nah. All right, defense, it's time to play again. Dag gone it. That was a squandered opportunity, though, Coach Keplinger. Those penalties will hurt. I'm sure the coaching staff not overly thrilled about it, but the game is still early. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think right now, Coach, there's a couple things that the defense has got to do. The defense has got to buckle down, buckle up their chin straps, and just come at these guys hard. Absolutely. There's a field position game to be played, and there could still be points to be had, obviously, with Absolutely. a safety opportunity. Absolutely. Mal Vernon has nothing on that. Well, you know, in a situation like this, too, Coach, with uh, – with their backs against the wall. You got to think that Mount Vernon is going to kind of play it smart here and uh, keep the ball on the ground. But you also got to look for some trick plays. You got to think maybe since the Prexies are kind of going to pin their ears back, you know, we might see a screen here from Mount Vernon. It could happen. Gadgets, obviously, if you're going to take a chance. Second and 10 from the two yard line here for Mount Vernon. Malverna keeps it on the ground again. Prexy's defense stiffens up. 
Looks like we had number 11 and number 54 on the tackle there. Coach, who are those young men for the Prexies? Juan Smith, and you said 54 is going to be Ray Candela. Right, one of my wrestlers as Ray, well. Ray, Ray the Candyman Candela on the tackle. Well, evidently, folks, the Candyman can. He can tackle. A sweet tackle, yeah. if I do say. <laughs> sweet tackle, Coach. That was a sweet tackle by the Candyman. All right, Malverna comes out of the huddle. You got to think, Coach, they're going to play it safe here. But once again, you know. We're playing the field position game here, and we get a stop. We're going to be in good shape. Looks like a full back dive there. Just give their uh, punter a little extra breathing room here on fourth down. Yeah, Coach, and uh, I, I really wasn't watching on that play, but I'd be willing to bet that there was probably a pulling guard on that one. That was probably a little bit of a full back trap there. I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong. All right. Once again, we have two dangerous returners in Nicholas Middlesworth and TJ Jefferson. It's a low punt. All right, get away from it, Prexies. All right, coach, we still got good field position here. Absolutely, low punt. Looks like it uh, lands about the 42, 43 yard line and the uh, presidents are on the right side of the 50 again to start. Well, you know, and the thing is too, I mean, the presidents are starting off, like you said, with the ball in good field position. And also too, I mean, you know, they've had two, two series under their belt. It's time to shake off the rust and really start to get down to what we can do. Use our skill position players to move the ball. Prexies line up in a diamond quads up top there. Empty backfield. You gotta think we're gonna see a pass here. Quarterback run by Mr. Ryan Sayer. Hold on to the ball, young man. Keep it low. I like that call, Coach Schneider. Get all your playmakers out there. They're obviously gonna be keyed in on, on the defense. Sayer's able to grab a few yards on that first down carry. Well, you know, by no means, Coach, am I an offensive guru, but I uh, wonder if uh, Coach Wesner has been watching maybe a little bit of Urban Meyer's offense at Ohio State, you know. You spread everybody out, you make everyone think you're going to pass, and then the quarterback takes off. So maybe Ryan Sayers trying to do his best JT Barrett impression there. Once again, the Prexies have an empty backfield. Ryan Sayer is in shotgun. Got a little motion here, a little fake sweep. Goes to Middlesworth on the right side. He's got blockers. Well, you know, and a kid like Nick Middlesworth, when he gets the ball in his hands, he is just electric. Absolutely, he wrestled for me for a year as well. What an athletic kid, what a nice kid. Looks like he got a convoy too. Props to the, uh, props to the offensive line and Coach Stone's boys there for getting out there. Yeah, absolutely, you know. Coach Stone, I know, has coached up those guys well. First and 10 for the Presidents at Mount Vernon's 31 yard line. All right, Prexies do a little trade here. Probably gonna see a little G here. There we go, there we go. All right, folks, that right there was nothing more than G. Nothing more than a guard pulling, kicking out the end man on the line of scrimmage while Robert Abrams punches it up in the hole. That has been a bread and butter play of Marion Harding for a very long time. However, that one was not that successful having only gone for a yard. And once again, I said as we go throughout the night, I want to call out the offensive lineman at uh, right guard. We have number 60, Dylan Darst. Actually, check that, folks. He is right tackle. <laughs> Mount Vernon's blitz is a little too much for the Prexies. And like I said at the beginning of the night, number six of Mount Vernon, Andrew Crane, is uh, their starting linebacker. And I talked to the coaches earlier this week, and from everything they saw that young man in the preseason, he is a blitzing machine. And they showed it there again to Sayer uh, before he could get rid of the ball. Well, you know, right now, Coach, we just we kind of have a chess match, you know? You kinda, you're kind of seeing what they're gonna do and what you're gonna do, and 
you know, you can watch all the film you want, but you can't really figure out much about what teams are going to do by watching scrimmages or even watching what they do last year. Oh, there we go. Little screen underneath to Bryce Starner. And Bryce Starner's going. Well, you know, Coach, when they feel like when they want to blitz, 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 what do you got to do? Let them come at you and throw the ball underneath. Good old-fashioned jailbreak screen right there, folks. Absolutely. They look like uh, they were faking that jet sweep there and on the play action. Got the screen going to the right, and Starner picks up a huge gain for a president's first down, and we are once again in the red zone at the five-yard line. Absolutely. It should be noted that young man who caught the ball, number 23, Bryce Starner, is a fantastic young man, also a star for the Prexies basketball team. Got Colin Hill in the backfield. Ryan Sayers looking at Coach Wessler. Coach Wessler's giving them some instructions here. Hill coughs up the football. And it is recovered. And the Prexies unfortunately turned the ball over. Colin Hill kind of coughed that up. I mean, it kind of looked like a pass, but uh, I. I don't know if that was a busted play or if Colin just lost control of the ball. Looks like number 20, Logan Tate, recovers that for Mount Vernon. All right. Mount Vernon comes back out again. Mount Vernon gives us uh, twins up top. Tight end down low. They have an eye backfield. Let's see if they hit us with an ISO here, folks. Pitch to the right, little pitch. And Mount Vernon puts the ball on the ground. Prexy's defense is swarming. I'm gonna tell you what, Coach, right now the Prexies are playing some darn good football. They just gotta cut out the mistakes on offense. Ooh, Mount Vernon's got second and forever there, Coach. Absolutely, that's a risk you take on that pitch. If you lose the ball, you're gonna get stuck in no man's land. <laughs> well, Coach, second and 20, what do you think? You run, you pass, <laughs> you just hope you get some yards, right? Uh, from your own six yard line, I think you're just running here. Yeah, I think so too, coach. I think so too. Now Vernon gives us an eye backfield again. Little guard pull, little counter play there. And how about that, Noah Cornbread Thompson coming up from his safety spot to stop that run. Coach, am I correct in saying that Noah Thompson, uh, red as he's known affectionately to all of his friends, is also a high school wrestler? Absolutely, he's wrestled for us for a long time. Uh, excited to have him out again, and of course, one heck of a football player. Well, you know, I've always heard, Coach, and of course I was a wrestler slash football player, so uh, <laughs> always heard that wrestlers make the best football players. Coach, what are your thoughts on that? Hey, I think uh, for any offensive line player, anybody really, you know, um, Urban Meyer at Ohio State, he doesn't recruit one sport athlete. So would definitely encourage those who do enjoy football to give them that a shot as well. Well, if Urban does it, Coach, it must be right. Look at that. There's about, I think, the whole Prexy defense, with the exception of maybe three guys, are in on that tackle. So here we go, Coach. Once again, the Prexy's defense has stopped them. The offense has put some yards up, but yet they've shot themselves in the foot. Is this the series that the Prexies put it all together, Coach? What do you think? I might be a homer, but I'm going with yes. Yeah, I'm going to do so too, sir. They're moving the ball at will, it seems. Absolutely. Oh, we Ooh, almost got almost that punt. Blocked. Nick Middlesworth catches it. That was a great tackle by number 27 there from the Yellow Jackets, none other than freshman. Wyatt Gregory, wow. You always like to see some freshmen out there getting some PT, huh? Absolutely. Special teams, tip of the spear. Well, you know, I think uh, John Cooper, who we all know had a problem beating Michigan but could recruit like crazy, said if you expect a dog to bite, you got to feed them when they're a pup or something like that. There's probably someone out there that's going crazy because I got that quote wrong, but something along those lines. We have about 53 seconds left in the first quarter. We have a tie, and by a tie, I mean nobody has broken into the end zone yet. Prexies line up. We have trips. Sale play, play action pass. Throws it deep. 
And there we go, Pedro. There we go. Nicholas Middlesworth scores the very first touchdown of the 2016 Marion Harding presence for the football season. It looks like he caught him on a streak there, Coach Schneider. He's just faster than anybody the defense had out there. They played the matchups perfectly. Touchdown presence. Well, and I'm going to tell you what, folks. I'm going to tell you what right now. One thing Ryan Sayer can do well, amongst many things, is that boy can sell a fake like no one's business. And that corner, he bit, baby, he bit. And Nick Middlesworth took advantage of it. Ryan Cobra Sayer put the ball up in the air, and we got six on the board, folks. And the kick by Robert Abrams was no good, Coach, but I think uh, you told me at the beginning of the night that young Savion Taylor is uh, injured, sir. Is that correct? Yeah, we had to take Sav off really early in our soccer game last night. Uh, they called Rob into a tough spot here. He hasn't kicked since freshman football, I believe, maybe if not middle school. Um, so we will have to keep an eye on that through this evening. So am I correct in hearing that Savion Taylor, who also kicks for the football team, is also a soccer player? Another two-sport athlete, Coach. Absolutely. Not only a two-sport athlete, but playing two sports at once. I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, you and uh, Coach got to be proud of a kid like that who's doing so much for his school. Absolutely. It's great to see him out. We do wish him a speedy cover recovery. So. Absolutely. Best of luck, Savvy. Well, you know, and him, being, uh, him not being out there kicking, you know, not only, uh, you know, is – you know, hurts the football team, but it also uh, hurts you guys out there on the soccer team. I know Savi is uh, not a bad little soccer player, Coach. Absolutely. He led our team in goals scored last year, so we will take away the approach, and as I said, just wishing him the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. Savi, if you're listening to this, get better, big guy. So the Prexies line up for the kickoff here. Uh, this is my favorite play in all of football. You kick the ball and you run down willy-nilly and you just you get a tackle, full speed, coach. Nothing better than a kickoff. Absolutely, and it looks like it'll be Quave Booker to kick for the present. Who's that kicking off for us, coach number 12? Quave Booker. That is Quave Booker, folks. On the tackle, number three, Tyreek Harris. Ty Coach, That's we've called his name a couple times tonight, huh? Tackle machine. When you got it, you got it. When you got it, you got it. Well, I'll tell you what. I coached Tyreek when he was a freshman. And it does my heart good to see him out there making tackles. He is a fantastic young man. So I believe this is probably the best starting position for the Yellow Jackets all night, Coach. We have, what, is that the 27-yard line? I'm looking at it sure is the first time in two or three series where they haven't been pinned down deep by harding's defense yeah, well the 27 is your best starting position you've had your backs against the wall coach that's a good first quarter on the toss and the prexies look at that i believe that was number 54 on the initial tackle coach is that the candy man again the candy man can the coach candy man can absolutely that was great hustle by Ray Candela. Great hustle and sure tackling from the president so far we've seen. Well, for those of you guys who uh, know your football, Ray Candela is playing our tackle. He's our three technique. So uh, we have Ray Candela down there. We also have number 75, big Hayden Hambone Hamilton. And folks, that is the end of the first quarter. Thank you for watching the Marion Harding High School Telecom production. We'll be back after these messages. Okay, boys and girls, what do you think it means to be proactive? Alex? Being friends. Being friends. Kayla? Being nice. Being nice. And we are back 
here at the start of the second quarter where the Mary Harding presidents up to this point have dominated this football game. We've made a lot of mistakes, coach. Uh, the score could be much more than what it is, but we have dominated. However, we're only up six to nothing, coach. What are your thoughts so far on this ball game? Um, obviously, just echoing what I said there at the end of the first, very sure tackling from the presidents, and we are moving the ball well on the offensive side. So. Hopefully these trends continue. Absolutely, Coach, absolutely. Screen That's a live ball. Looks like a live ball. Ooh. I'm going to go on a limb and say I thought that was a live pass, Coach. But then again, I'm up here and uh, the refs are down there. So what do I know? Should be noted also on the President's defensive line, we have number 42 which is Colin Hill and we also I also see a number five down there none other than Drake Fascio deep for the presidents at free safety we have Noah Thompson at number 11 we have Daywan Smith and at number eight we have TJ Jefferson And that's the curse of the commentator there. I've been big on presidents tackling all day, and the wide receiver goes to break two on that pass. Well, you know, on that co on that play, coach, the practice were there. We just got to make a tackle. And I think it's safe to say that uh, Malvernon hasn't had much success running the ball, so I think we're probably going to see a little bit more passing there. That was nothing more than a waggle play there, and uh, just threw it to a to the big guy out in the flats, and uh, he ran over a couple people there, coach. First and for Mount Vernon from the 23-yard line. Yellow Jackets run nothing more than a little counter trap play there. Prexies are having none of that. Well, and you know, Coach, at the end of the day, I think that that is the only positive play that Mount Vernon's had, and, you know, it's going to happen. You know, players are going to make plays, and teams are going to bust plays sometimes. The Prexies just need to, you know, buckle down and remember the most important play is the next play and just forget about that one and move on. Absolutely. Big time. Ben, don't break territory here for the Harding defense. All right, let's see what the Yellow Jackets come with here. We got second and nine. Come out of the huddle. Come out in a pro set with flat backs. Little play action pass. Looks like uh, Mount Vernon goes back to the well again and runs a similar play to the one that they got a lot of yards on, Coach. A decent adjustment for the Mount Vernon offense here, finding a little bit of success in the Harding Flats here. Absolutely. I know Coach Slater is down there beside himself, having uh, seen Mount Vernon be successful on the same play. And that's just the chess match you mentioned in the first quarter, Coach Schneider. That's big number 43 for Mount Vernon. He's a big fella. That was just right up the gut there. On the tackle, Noah Thompson. I'll go ahead and ask the football guy. Uh, ever since I can remember, pro formation seemed like a very popular formation in the 90s and seemed to kind of go by the wayside. Tell me, what is advantageous? Why are we seeing a resurgence of this pro formation here for Mount Vernon? Well, I think a lot of times your formation comes down to who you have. You know, you see a lot of times, like a, like a Wisconsin, you know, they, they recruit those big hosses on offensive line. So there's still a pro style. So sometimes in high school, you know, you kind of have to adjust to what you have. So I think it's safe to say that Mount Vernon maybe probably doesn't have a lot of skill, but they have power, which is why they went back to a pro formation. And back to that pro formation once again. Mount Vernon in the end zone, and on that one, folks, that's just an example of the low man wins. And Mount Vernon was a little lower on that, and they pushed and uh, made it in the end zone. However, 
Still a lot of football game left, Coach Keplinger. That looks like 43 Freddie Hart for Mount Vernon. Uh, you've called his name several times this series. Good drive for that kid. Well, I think it's safe to say that whole drive was Freddie Holt, Coach. That whole drive was Freddie Holt. Stop that young man and I think we'll be fine. There we go, there we go. None other than TJ. No, I'm sorry folks, I don't believe that's TJ Jefferson. Let me double check here. No, folks, that was TJ Jefferson. TJ Jefferson coming off the edge, blocking the PAT. Speed kills, coach. Just like you said, speed kills. Absolutely, offense, defense, special teams here. Found a way to utilize an athlete. And obviously make a difference. Um, obviously keeping that game tied with that play there. Prexes are back on offense here. I know Coach Slater's gonna call his defense together. Gonna make adjustments and I think it's safe to say, Coach, that uh, wherever uh, senior Freddie Hart for Mount Vernon is, the presidents are gonna know. Coach, I think uh, we're probably gonna see a kickoff like we saw before. You know, these guys watch film and uh, I'm pretty sure that they watched a lot of film last year at Marion Harding High School and they saw Nick Middlesworth and TJ Jefferson do some dazzling things with the football. So if Mount Vernon's smart, they're gonna keep the ball on the ground and out of the hands of TJ and Nicholas. Absolutely, looks like you got some secondary up here in this first line for kick return. Anticipating a short kick. No, folks. They're, They're going to kick it to, it to him. him. All right, let's see what Nick can do with it. Looks like it hurdles a man, picks up some blocks to the right, and decent field position once again for the Presidents. Coach, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, uh, the hurdle's supposed to be illegal in high school football. Wasn't that uh, LJ Scott who had that top 10 play a couple years ago on ESPN that was called a penalty? None other by Marion native Jimmy Fitzko. Dun -na, dun -na, dun -na. <laughs> you know what? But that was a uh, that was a beautiful play by L.J. Scott a couple years ago, and that was the right call to be made because uh, hurdling is against the rules in high school. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, the most important thing is to keep these youngsters safe when they're playing what can be sometimes a dangerous game. And great work by Mr. Mullins and the telecom program to get that package and sent to ESPN in a very timely manner. We Absolutely. saw that on ESPN Monday morning. We did, didn't we? Little TJ Jefferson in the Wildcat. Wildcat formation. He's got the corner. And he runs into his blocker. All right. Wild, it's dangerous there. Obviously, no exchange needed to get the ball to the playmaker. And typically, your offensive line is stacked strong one side on that Wildcat formation. Absolutely, Coach. But uh, a first shot of Wildcat didn't work there. We lost the yard. But however, I think it's safe to say that the Prexies will go back to Wildcat. Just because once or doesn't work once doesn't mean it won't work again. Speed kills, and you want to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers, guys like TJ Jefferson. Second and 11 here for the president. Prex has come out in eye formation, coach. We'll see what we see here. Oh, we shift down. Play action. Oh, that Sayers was got a Quatley great, Booker. fantastic catch. Who was that on the catch, coach? That was number 12, Quave Booker making the catch. Quave Booker. Welcome back, young man. Great catch. I said it once and I'll say it again. Ryan Sayer can sell that fake like a salesman selling Encyclopedia Britannica's, coach. Old school. That was a very old school reference. <laughs> Up the gut. From where I'm standing, it looks like the presidents are going to be just short. In that power what do you run. think, Coach? You think Coach Wessler gambles? I would. I would. It's hard to say here. Uh, first person now we saw say is quarterback and punter, but it does look like we are going for it. Let's see the spot here, coach. Wow. 
From up here, coach, it doesn't look like it. From this angle, it doesn't look like it. Oh, they're gonna measure it. Looks like we will measure. Well, at least we're measuring it. At least we're measuring it. Let's, uh, let's hope the gentleman over there on the uh, chain crew uh, give us a favorable spot there. Uh, I'm looking at, uh, I think we got Bobby Nault, Jeff Hill over there on the chain. So, uh, old Harding guys, let's see if, uh, see what the chains do for us here, coach. Looks just short. For the short presidents. by a hair, coach. Turnover on downs. Well, you know, Coach, I think when we look at that series, I think what we're gonna remember more than anything about that last series there was that negative play on first down, you know? Even if it's a yard or two, the first down play always has to be a positive play because if not, you're basically playing catch up. I'd agree with you there, Coach. And again, respect the idea of going to Wildcat. See if they go back to it. Quarterback in a shotgun here. Backs flanked to each side, and it's Freddie Hart again, folks. Seems like the wild, the Yellow Jackets, rather, have found a answer to the Prexies defense. And right now, folks, that is young Freddie Hart, senior from Mount Vernon, Ohio. Huddle. We have twins down low. Flanker up top. Looks like Andrew Crane, number six, spelled hard there on that carry. Well, you know, coach, and you got to wonder here if the Yellow Jackets feel like they're in um, four down territory here. I got to think that they that they probably feel that they are, Coach. Absolutely, that's a risk that uh, we were willing to take. I do not doubt that they are in the same field position as well. Well, you know, well. and if I'm the president, right now I'm thinking I'm looking for none other than Freddie Hart out in the flats. That seemed to be their go-to play on their last scoring drive, so. The pulse of their offense, if you will. Absolutely, well, we have them in an eye back set here, so I'm betting we're gonna see some kind of uh, play action pass here. Nope. It's a toss pitch to, to Hardy Hart. And it looks like he is going to get just enough for a first down. Boy, that young man runs hard. Absolutely. Big physical runner, like I mentioned in the pregame. Um, talked to Coach Slater. They knew they were uh, cued in on him. They were ready to go. But sometimes, like I said, when you got it, you got it. And Freddie Hart running hard this evening. Well, you know, and the thing about a kid like that, uh, you can't tackle him high, coach. I think right now that's what the Prexes are doing. You got to take a guy like that low because when he, you watch a young man, when he goes to get tackled, he keeps pumping his legs, pumping his legs, and if you take him high, he's just going to drag you. Absolutely. Once again, Hart, whose name we have called a lot in the past two series, with the carry there with a four yard gain. Noah Thompson on the tackle. Second and six for the Yellow Jacket on the 30 yard line. Well, you know, the Prexies defense needs to wake up here and get ourselves a big stop get a little momentum because once again like we talked about football is most certainly a game of momentum and I think it's safe to say right now the Yellow Jackets have it. High backfield set again and it's another toss to Hardy Hart. Right now, the Prexies have no answer for Freddie Hart. He is just doing anything that he wants to our youngsters. Mount 
So they are methodically marching the ball down the field. <laughs> Freddie Hart comes out for a blow. That's a good thing, considering he has been the dagger to the Prexy so far. Matt Hart carry makes it first and 10 for Mount Vernon from the 24 yard line. Four minutes, 16 seconds to go in the half. And once again, coach with Freddie Howard out of the ball game, the Prexy's defense once again is successful. And we saw it the first couple of series as well. The president's having no problem tackling anybody not number 43. <laughs> I think Freddie Hart's their kryptonite right now, coach. And being a football guy yourself, Coach Schneider, tell me, what does a big, powerful runner do to a defense over the course of a game? Coach, they wear you down. They wear you down. Because a big, powerful runner like that, he just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming, and it wears you down. Now they have number six on the carry. We talked about him a little bit earlier. Andrew Crane, senior linebacker. Also carrying the ball. Yeah, also carrying the ball. I think it's safe to say that uh, him and old Freddie Hart are probably their, uh, their best threats right now. Third and seven for the Yellow Jackets at the 21 yard line. Three minutes left on the clock. This has got to be a pretty big play call for Mount Vernon here, coach. Absolutely, coach, absolutely. And right now with the fact that the um, Yellow Jackets have given us run, 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 run. I'm thinking we're probably going to see a play action pass here. Conventional but, wisdom would tell you that that is now set up. Well, and you know, Coach, I, uh, well, it looks like the Yellow Jackets are going to call a timeout here. They're going to let the clock run down and call a timeout. That's exactly what they're going to do. Well, Coach, I'm going to tell you this. By no means was I a offensive guru. In fact, I was probably a uh, pretty bad offensive play caller, and I'm sure there's a couple people out there that would agree with that. <laughs> They However, just call it offensive. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, if if I'm the coach for, um, if I'm the offensive coordinator for Mount Vernon right now, I'm probably thinking of play action pass. However, now that they've called a timeout and they're in the, you know, they're in the huddle talking, uh, maybe some trickery, coach. Maybe some trickery. Coach Slater down there coaching up his boys, kind of telling them, uh, you know, what could happen. You got to look for this, you got to look for that. Also, Coach Chris Brady in the huddle with the youngsters, along with Gene Rucker, another uh, fine young man who coaches for the uh, Marion Harding Prexes. I had the pleasure of coaching him in uh, high school. Went on to Capitol, played some football. Uh, just, just a fine young man that we're lucky to have back here in Marion, Ohio. And that Capitol alum is the only bad thing I have to say about him being an Otterbein grad myself. Oh, so are you telling me that Otterbein doesn't like Capitol? Uh, nice Central Ohio rivalry. There's nothing like OAC football as the alternative to Ohio State football in, in the middle of the state. Well, I'm here to tell you, Coach Kaplan, you knew as well as I do, there's a lot of fine football played in Ohio that isn't just played by the Buckeyes. There's a lot of great small college ball in the state of Ohio. Oh, and he fumbles a snap. And Freddie Hart makes something out of nothing. Absolutely. Good composure there from Mount Vernon. Bodge snap. Keep their composure. Get the ball in Hart's hands. They make something good happen for them. First and goal. Two minutes, 30 seconds left in the half. Well, you know, Coach, and sometimes those, uh, sometimes those busted plays, you know, a fumbled snap and stuff like that, it messes up the timing of the play, but it also throws the defense off and allows things to break free. One of those intricacies of football that is hard to explain. Absolutely, Coach, absolutely. I'm guessing we're going to see Freddie Hart again. Looks like Crane is the ball carrier. Andrew Crane. So with one minute and 59 seconds left in the first half, Mount Vernon takes a 12 to six lead over the Marion Harding Prexes. And it looks like Mount Vernon was offsides. 
which is a good sign for the Prexies. Absolutely. When you have a chance to block that first one, and obviously TJ did, anytime you can back that kicking team up. Well, coach, I was wrong. That was on the D. Disregard that last thing. Absolutely. Well, now, coach, it looks like they're changing personnel, and I'm thinking that Mount Vernon is probably going to go for two. Little Freddie Hart here, coach. What do you think? Conventional wisdom would tell you so. Well, I see, I think I see number 43 back in the ball. Yes, I do, folks. Freddie Hart is back in the ball game. And as you guessed, Coach Schneider, it does look like Mount Vernon will be going for the two-point conversion here. They go to Crane. with the two-point conversion. Eight-point lead now on the Marion Harding Prexies. Well, you know, right now, Coach, uh, you know, there's still, a, there's still a minute 59 left in this ball game. There's still a whole half left to play. So, I mean, it's not time to get... Uh, it's not time to get nervous or anything like that. I mean, there's still a lot of ball game left to play. But I think anyone who's been watching this ball game up to this point will say one thing right now about the Prexies. This game up to this point for them has been about missed opportunities. Absolutely, and hopefully they do not come back to haunt. Uh, from a football sense, Coach Schneider, where are you going on this drive? Not a lot of success in between the tackles so far on our offensive side. Uh, what's the game plan here? What are we cooking up on this two-minute drill? Well, I think what's worked for the Prexies is you've seen screens work for them. You've seen some outside runs by T.J. Jefferson. Have you also seen a little play action pass? However, for the play action pass to work, you got to establish a little bit of the run game. But with a minute 59 left in the ball game, or I'm sorry, left in the half and two timeouts, the Prexies can take their time here. There's plenty of time left in this ball game for them to do something. And it looks like the up man takes it. Booker finds a little opening and gets it out to about the 40-yard line. That was number 22, I believe. Uh, who was that, Coach? Number 12. Number 12, my goodness. I need glasses. Quave Booker, Coach, I think you called it out right off the bat. Couldn't hear you over the noise up here. Looked like he surprised his return man a little bit taking that, but the end result is still a positive. Harding starts on their own 40-yard line. Decent field position to run the two-minute drill out of here. You know, and that's the thing, Coach. Uh, the Prexies have really good field position right now. they got to capitalize in, on it. But once again, this first down play has to be positive. Middlesworth. Middlesworth with the ball in his hands. <laughs> TJ Jefferson peeled back on a beautiful block here. But he's got to be a little careful there, Coach. Got to be a little careful. Ref's talking to him right now. Just tell him, young man, that was a great block. Just make sure you're not taunting. Kid who's playing the game hard, playing the right way. Well, and absolutely, coach. You can't, you can't ever fault a young man for putting a hat on a hat. He's got to act like you've been there before. But T.J. Jefferson is a great young man. I know coach Slater's getting him coached up. And, uh, you know, even though Coach Slater's a defensive coach, he's still coaching him up, talking to him all the time. And uh, what do you know, coach? Great first down play by the Harding Prexies. Absolutely, there's your positive first down play. Maybe I'm psychic, coach, I don't know. Oh, they go pitch to Cornbread Thompson. It looked like he wanted to throw that there. Yeah, coach, I think that was a little trickeration there, but uh, Mount Vernon was having none of it. Now with a minute, nine, eight, seven counting right now, the uh, clock is the Prexies enemy. Looks like the presidents go empty backfield here on second down. Sayer so getting pressured. Well, I know a lot of people who are watching this game are thinking, oh, why doesn't he throw it away? Why doesn't he throw it away? Well, that works in the NFL, but that is a rule that is not there in high school football, and a lot of people don't know that. Still good 
Football smarts by Sayer there to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Give his team a chance here should something positive come. Yeah, absolutely. Third and 13 from the 47 yard line. 50 ticks left on the clock. Looks like they're gonna take a chance downfield. And Sayers passes intercepted. By number 19, Jacob Teal. Looks Gabe like Detweiler, number 22 on the touchdown saving tackle. That was a shoestring tackle, two save six there. Heads up play, obviously not the result we had hoped for, but still very heads up play to make that tackle and save six points. Absolutely. Well, you know, and the thing is, is uh, with, uh, you know, a couple ticks left on the clock there, you gotta be a little smarter with the ball. And once again, if there's a story of this first half for the Marion Harding Presidents, it is mistakes and missed opportunities. You know, sports is all about who makes the least mistakes, and right now, Mount Vernon's made the least amount. Mount Vernon's gonna play it smart, keep the ball on the ground, and probably be happy to go in at halftime with a eight point lead. And just like that, they go and call a timeout. Well, yeah, coach, I guess I was wrong. Maybe he calls a timeout here and uh, tries to take a shot. If it works, he's a genius. If it doesn't, then, you know, you got an eight point lead at halftime. All our Monday morning quarterbacking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, football is one of those games that a lot of people watch, and you know, because a lot of people watch it, they uh, they kind of have an opinion about it. But like I tell people all the time, just because you watch a bunch of westerns doesn't mean you know how to beat John Wayne, and just because you watch a bunch of football doesn't mean you know how to coach it. That's right, Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Kevley, I don't. Uh, I don't, I don't know if that was a very good John Wayne there, sir, but it was certainly a good try. Yeah, I'm no Al Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either of us are. I think most people watching this would probably agree that neither one of us is Al Michaels, sir. Do you believe in the mute button? Yes. <laughs> 25 ticks left in the ball game. Uh, the main thing here for the Prexies is to make sure they don't let anything big happen. And right now, uh, Mount Vernon comes out and trips, so you got to think that they're going to do something here. They will air it out. Yeah. Quarterback slides rather than uh, take a hit. QB Jackson Gregory there does not see anybody open. Good coverage there from the president's secondary. Uh, so wisely just takes what the defense gives him instead of forcing a ball up there. Well, you know, I think sometimes that's what you gotta do in football. You gotta take what's given to you. You know, when you force things, sometimes the end result is bad. And, uh, you know, I think, I think sometimes uh, these uh, youngsters out there for the Prexies have tried to force some things tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I think we just need to relax and settle down a little bit and good things will happen to us because I believe right now that uh, our skill players are better than theirs. And we could win this ball game. We just gotta find out a way to stop old Freddie Hart. Absolutely, you've talked about it. The ebbs and flows, the momentum. Right now, obviously, in most of this second quarter, it's been Mount Vernon's ball game. Uh, but get into the locker room, make some adjustments. I have full faith in our coaching staff. Oh, absolutely, coach. Anybody who knows anything about football knows that all of the best coaching is done at halftime, and you better believe that Coach Wessler's gonna have an answer on his offense, and you better believe that Coach Slater's gonna have an answer for Freddie Hart on defense. So, uh, contrary to what I thought, Mount Vernon calls two timeouts, and I think they're gonna take a shot here, Coach. Absolutely, play action again. And with seven ticks left on the clock, I think they're gonna take another shot here. That was uh, TJ Jefferson on the defense there. Looked like number seven, Caden Daniels was the open man there. 
Yeah, Coach Caden Daniels, junior wide receiver from Mount Vernon, Ohio, trying to catch that ball. Looks like Mount Vernon's gonna be in trips again. Trips up top, a single flanker down low here, so uh, don't let anyone deeper than your boys, deeper than the deepest. And he keeps it, see if he can make something happen. And that's it, folks, at halftime. The Blue Jackets come roaring back from a 6-0 deficit to take a 14-6 lead. We will go to halftime here. Thank you for watching the Marion Harding Presidents versus the Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets, a Marion Harding High School telecom production. Marion City Digital Academy is a Marion City School sponsored tuition free online accredited community school for students in grades K through 12 living within the Marion City Schools District. We offer a home based online learning environment with the benefit of one on one teacher support and individualized instruction. Our flexible learning schedules provide opportunities for students to work at their own pace. Computer and internet service is provided. The Marion City Digital Academy is open five days a week and is staffed by certified teachers. We are located at 360 Pennsylvania Avenue next to George Washington Elementary. Call us at 740-223-3882. Marion City Schools, inspiring a community of achievement. Miss C. She's so great. She teaches me a lot of good stuff. She taught me that everything I do starts with me. I'm in charge. She taught me to have a plan and make sure I do all my work before I play. I also learned how to play well with others. I try to remember that everyone can win. And I listen before I talk. That makes working together a lot more fun. I know that balance feels best, so I remember to take care of myself. Miss C taught me lots of things, but the best one ever is that I can be great. What if every child had the same opportunity? The opportunity to develop the essential life skills and characteristics students need to thrive in the 21st century. The Leader in Me process provides the teacher experience and classroom implementation tools to put your school on the path to greatness. As you integrate timeless principles into your school's core curriculum and language, you will build student self-confidence, reduce discipline referrals, and increase academic achievement. Find out more at theleaderinme.org. Great happens here. All right, folks, welcome back. Halftime is uh, over here following a fantastic performance by our award-winning band under the direction of Jacob Hartman, UG Jones, with a little help from the legend Richard Baird. Uh, you ever get a, you ever get to talk to Mr. Baird much there, uh, Coach Keplinger? Oh yeah, I took uh, trumpet lessons in fifth grade, and I was terrible. I'm, you took I, trumpet lessons, I, sir? I, I'm just really glad I didn't make him lose his love of music <laughs> by my own sounds alone. <laughs> well, uh, trumpet lessons aside, Coach, uh, we're back, and uh, you know I think the story of the first half with the Prexies is, you know, missed opportunities. I mean. Gosh, dog, we picked off the ball. We A couple times we had the ball deep in our own territory. We didn't punch it in. We um, went for a first down uh, twice, actually, once deep in our territory and once on the 40-yard line. Didn't get it. And then uh, the heartbeat of the uh, Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets, not Blue Jackets, I've been calling them, woke up and Freddie Hart, and he kind of took it to the Prexies there, Coach. Absolutely, that power run game really slicing and dicing there in the second quarter. Uh, definitely thinking adjustments need to be made. And uh, as the old adage goes, that's why they play four quarters. Absolutely, Coach, absolutely. And uh, Mount Vernon won the toss, so uh, they deferred in the first half, so now they're going to get the kickoff in the second half. So let's see what Coach Slater drew up on the board and uh, what he has ready for us. 
Booker the kickoff here. Oh, and oh, it's between his legs. He touched it. That's a live ball, folks. Oh, you can't run by him. And once again, Coach, sometimes those busted plays are the most dangerous ones in the world because you're flying a million miles an hour. You think you know where the ball's going, and then, oh, it goes somewhere else. And uh, those can sometimes get ugly. That one looked like it might there for a second. But uh, Robbie Abrams made the tackle on that one, Coach. Absolutely. And as you were saying earlier, or as I was saying earlier, rather, just one of those intricacies of football, you know. You yeah. Game plan. You you have plays. Everything's set up. Everything is meticulous. And sometimes the ball just takes a funny bounce or takes a hop, and not much you can do to predict or anticipate that. Well, you know, sometimes, Coach, like you said, the ball just bounces strange, and uh, sometimes that's life, you know. Sometimes the ball doesn't bounce the way you want it to. Come out in another pro set. Flat backs in the backfield. And once again, it is Freddie Hart. Freddie Hart. And uh, Prexy's have an answer there. Freddie Hart only picks up one yard there. Absolutely. No doubt defensive coaching staff has the team refocused in and re-keyed on Freddie Hart. Well, once again, like we talked, he's a power runner, Coach. He's going to pump those legs. you got to... When you tackle a guy like that, you got to hit him low and you got to keep driving your feet. And uh, that is something the Prexies did not do well there in the second quarter. Mount Vernon comes out. We have doubles. Now we have an eye backfield set. Let's watch the guards here, folks, and see if we have anybody pull. We do not. Nothing more than a toss. And the Prexies are there on the toss. Stopping hard on a second straight play. All right, Noah, the wrestler, Cornbread Thompson. Only a sophomore, folks. We're gonna be calling his name quite a bit this season, and I know we're gonna be calling it quite a bit in the next couple years. Absolutely, great football instincts I've heard from the coaching staffs. Absolutely, well, you know, a kid like Noah, coach, he's, uh, he's just an athlete. And athletes do what athletes do. Whether that's run fast or hit hard or make plays, you know? Absolutely, third down and 11 for Mount Vernon here from their own 21 yard line. And the Prexies come out with an answer and get a stop. I gotta imagine that's what you want to open up. If you're not getting the ball to start the second half, right? First series stop a otherwise potent offense so far today. Great defense from the president. Absolutely, Coach. That is exactly what you want because the last thing you want is the team to come out and set the tone after the after halftime. So here we go. The Prexes get a chance to set their own tone. Once again, we have Nicholas Middlesworth and TJ Jefferson deep for the Prexies. I'll tell you what, Coach Slater is geeked after that defensive series. We got a high punt. Nick Middlesworth makes a dangerous, dangerous catch and traffic but I'm gonna tell you what there's a young man who's got short hands and there's a young man who is a smart football player it is Nicholas Middlesworth so uh, I'm gonna trust him every time to do that coach absolutely that fair catch keeps a funky bounce from happening too as we've said that unpredictable nature of football sometimes and again gives the president's great field position to start the half yeah absolutely coach we're on our own 45 yard line I mean I, I'm really not a statistics guy, obviously, because you and I are uh, both social studies teachers, or at least I used to be. Uh, <laughs> so, But I, I'm willing to bet that statistics say if you get the ball on your own 45-yard line, you are probably got a good chance of scoring. Absolutely. TJ Jefferson, Jefferson breaks makes free the tackle. Miss. He two blocks there. Might go, folks. He cuts back. As I, as I said in the pregame, Coach Snyder, get it to T.J. Jefferson in space right there to open up the Harding series. Well, I'm going to tell you what, folks. That was the Jeffersons because we're moving on up into the red zone. You're aging yourself a little there. <laughs> well, I think most people get that Jefferson's, uh, you know, 
joke there. A great play by TJ Jefferson. Fantastic play by that guy. Excellent Fantastic down execution. Excellent downfield blocking as well. That was Gabe Detweiler on the carry there. Uh, little two-yard loss there. Uh, I couldn't see who that tackle was, but uh, willing to bet that was a blitzing linebacker on that one as quick as that was tackled. Had to come from the backside and hunt him down. Second and 12 here for the Presidents. We've got Colin Hill at fullback, Gabe Detweiler at tailback, Ryan Sayer under center. The Prexies in a pro formation. Go back to Gabe Detweiler. He could go, folks. Seven yard gain there, coach. We're on the five yard line. Uh, coach, what do you think? I think we're gonna see that little play action pass that we uh, scored the touchdown on in the first quarter there that got called off. Oh, if I had a venture guess, I'm going play action pass here indeed. I've uh, been struggling a little bit in between the tackles. Still hard run there by Gabe. Good job by the interior line to open that hole up. Uh, but it seems we have been moving the ball well once we get Sayer out into a bootleg. Well, you got to think the Mount Vernon's bringing linebackers right now. Ah. And it looks like we get down to the one-yard line, Coach. Definitely got to go for it here. Once again, this is an opportunity we have to capitalize on, Coach. Fourth and two or fourth and goal, folks. Checking in the ball game, we have number one, number five, and number 23. Number one is Gary Mooney, number five is Drake Fashione, and number three is Bryce Starner. Bringing a lot of size in here. Oh, looks like we're gonna go a little, uh, little tight set here. Colin Hill's the only back in the backfield, so you gotta think maybe they're gonna give him the ball. And Colin Hill with the touchdown, Hill folks. Three. All right, coach, we got to go for two. What's your two? What's your uh, two-point conversion play, coach? What do you think? I couldn't even venture a guess. Now I'll leave that one to the experts. Anyone that works, right, coach? That's right. <laughs> well, you know they say it's an offensive play caller. If you call it and it works, you're a genius. And if you don't, then you know you're the. Uh, you're the scapegoat, if you will. I'm gonna tell you what, Coach, that was a great answer by the Harding Praxis to start this second half. With that answer, Coach, I like our chances. Absolutely, and what I did notice there on that drive, like I mentioned, uh, Harding's interior line and able to run in between the tackles several times on that drive. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very good sign we didn't see in the first half. Well, Colin Hill all tackle, man. You got to like that all day, coach. And that two-point conversion. It is good, folks. And here we are. We have ourselves a very tied ball game. Coach Brady is excited down there. Coach Wessler is congratulating his offensive line. And we got a tie ball game, folks. We got a tie ball game. Nice design pass there. Sayer found Noah Cornbread Thompson in the end zone for the two-point conversion. Well, and you know, Sayer just uh, scrambled around a little bit, and like you said, he saw uh, he saw Cornbread Thompson there in the end zone, and he threaded the needle. You know, folks, and uh, while we got a little break in action here, we, we, we got to talk about some fantastic things that are happening in Marion City Schools. For those people who are here tonight for the first time in Marion Marion Harding High School history, they saw brand new restrooms and a brand new concession stand. Uh, phase three of our renovation here at the stadium. They put in a new track last year, folks, and they built new bathrooms. They are state of the art, and the Booster Club has a great area down there in which to sell their goods and make some uh, money to, you know, better our sports and better our athletes and better our community as a whole. I mean, uh, pretty exciting things going on in Marion City Schools right now, Coach, on all facets. Absolutely, and coming soon, turf as well, I believe, correct? Yeah, Coach, I, I think that's supposed to be phase three, sir. On the tackle, that is number 32, Coach. Who is that, sir? Brandon Keller. That's the rooster. Holy smokes. The rooster on attack. 
I'll tell you what, Coach, that's a good number. That was my high school number, number 32. Who else wore number 32, Coach? What great running back for the Cleveland Browns, considered to be the greatest football player of all time, wore 32, sir? I think it's Jim Brown, Coach Schneider. Yeah, it is Jim Brown. For a second there, Coach, I thought you were going to come at me with uh, Christian Okoye or something like that. Uh, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. Give it to Kick, Morris, and Zonka all day. <laughs> uh, absolutely, Coach. Absolutely. Low snap there. Uh, I'm going to think that was offsides by the yellow jackets, not the blue jackets, Coach. I was told by a couple of these youngsters up here in uh, telecom that I called them the Blue Jackets a couple times. You did indeed. A few of my psychology classes might tell you you're suffering from color blindness. <laughs> absolutely, Coach. Absolutely. Well, if I'm correct, I think you're more of a hockey fan than I am, right? Now that I am. <laughs> Yellow Jackets, folks, not the Blue Jackets. All right, here we go. Mount Vernon comes out of their, uh, comes out of their huddle. We have a pro formation. We have a shotgun set with split backs. Little counter there to the heartbeat. And he is stood up is and set. knocked. No suit for you, young man, on the tackle. Who is that, folks, coming up from the bottom there? Based upon the excitement and everyone giving him a high five, that's number 28. Is that Robert, sir? Robert Abrams. Robert Abrams and I believe Mr. Brent Gornflow, the PA announcer, also said that was cornbread on that one too. Noah Thompson. Excellent. Something I noticed there. Second straight play, low snap for Mount Vernon. Let's see if this becomes problematic for them in their offense. Well, and you know, Coach, it should be noted that it's a hot one out there. You know, you got these youngsters out there and 10, 15 pounds of pads, especially these Harding boys wearing all black. Boy, howdy, it gets hot out there. I don't doubt it. Oh, looks like we had a quarterback sack there, but uh, number 17, the quarterback for Mount Vernon, Jackson Gregory, kind of pulls free Robert there. Robert Abrams. Second straight play for Rob. Sorry. Well, I'll be dogged. We're calling Robert Abrams' name a lot, Coach. You must have, uh, must have taught him well in psychology class there because it sounds to me like he's in the zone. But um. <laughs> All right, folks, the Prexy's defense is clicking on all cylinders here. We've got third and 13. Uh, the Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets come out in trips. You got to believe here we're going to see some kind of bootleg type pass here. Quarterback stands in the pocket. Oh, and the ball is picked off by number 21. Seth Tyler on the interception there, and he brings it into the red zone. Holy smokes. Coach, I'm sorry, who was that for the Prexies? Number 21, Seth Tyler. Seth Tyler. Not what? to be outdone, he gets his name called this well, evening. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, I, Coach Brady just gave him about the biggest hug I've ever seen him give anybody. He's pretty excited right now, so. There is a flag. Oh, we had great field position, kind of shot ourselves in the foot there. But, you know, sometimes, Coach, when your team gets an interception like that, you run down the field, you're trying to make a block, you get excited and dead gumming if you don't hit somebody in the back, you know? Absolutely. But we would still like to mention it is still Harding's ball. The interception stands. We're just moving back 15 well, yards. Well, Coach, and I like our chances. We got the ball in the 35-yard line. Absolutely. All right, coming out on the offensive line, we also have number 56, Caden Brady. If you're looking at him right now, he is your left tackle, son of coach Chris Brady and also son of, or I'm sorry, nephew of head coach John Brady. And folks, we have a timeout right now. We're going to take a moment to uh, hear from our sponsors. We have the Prexies tied 14 to 14 here in the third quarter. Thank you for watching a Marion Harding Telecom Telecom production. Cleveland referrals and increase academic achievement. Find out more at theleaderinme.org. Great happens here. It's been said men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. 
Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. The Knights of Columbus, in service to one, in service to all. The hey, welcome schools back from promote. commercial break. The Prexies line up on the ball, and evidently they got the call at timeout, and they're ready to rock and roll, folks. Here we go. Play action here. Play action. Ryan Sayer running. Bryce He's Starner, got Starner with the catch. Just like that, coach. We're back in action, sir. Absolutely. Great play action to start. Uh, Sayer had a man in hot pursuit there. Great composure to throw that ball up to Starner. Absolutely, and it should be noted during the commercial break, we saw some commercials for the Leader in Me, which is one of our four pillars here in Marion City Schools, and we also saw a commercial for the Knights of Columbus, a fantastic civic organization across the country, but especially here in Marion, Ohio, that does great things for our community and our youngsters. First and 10 presidents from the 16-yard line. All right, coach. We're uh, in the red zone again, moving on up, right? Oh, and that was a screen that could have ended very, very, very dangerously there. Thank goodness that was not picked off. Coach, we saw that play work earlier this game, didn't we? Absolutely. That decoy to Jefferson wide really opened up that screen early in the first half. It looks like uh, Mount Vernon was keen to it this go-round. Well, T.J. Jefferson checks out of the ball game. Colin Hill checks in. And you got to think maybe, Coach, that Colin Hill off tackle, uh, maybe we're going to see that again. We'll see. <laughs> Colin at fullback, Gabe Detweiler, the detonator at tailback. That was encroachment on the Yellow Jackets. I'll tell you what, Coach Kevling, I don't know about you, but I like free things, and we just got a free five yards, sir. Absolutely. Well, you know, but uh, in the classic song, Money, they say the best things in life are free, but you can give them to the birds and bees, but I'll take that one. I'll take encroachment. <laughs> absolutely, sir, absolutely. All right, so the Prexies are in. Looks like TJ. Dynamite Jefferson is back in the ball game. The lone tailback. We've got little diamond trips down low here. TJ Jefferson gets the ball. He runs wide. He cuts up. First down, coach. Absolutely. And I think in football circles, correct me if I'm wrong, we call that first and goal. First and goal for the president. First and goal. Is that the way they yell goals in soccer there, Coach Keplinger? Some circles of the world, Some yes, circles. indeed. What about uh, those Brazilian boys that won Olympic gold? Do you think they yell gold like that down in Brazil? Uh, I don't think they've stopped yelling yet. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure as the host country. Soccer and, rich nation, they've never won an Olympics. Nation, they were really excited to win that gold medal. Kudos to those guys. TJ Jefferson cuts. Oh, and number 33 makes a great tackle for the Yellow Jackets, Dakota Shock, and he shocks TJ Dynamite Jefferson on that play. So the Prexies regroup, still got the ball on the five yard line, and you gotta believe, Coach, they're gonna take three cracks towards the old pay dirt, sir. Absolutely, if, in, if the last drive was any indication, see, steady diet of runs here. Absolutely, sir, absolutely. Bryce Starner splits out. TJ Jefferson. A little Pl bootleg. Play action set up perfectly. And with the catch, we have number 12 for the Prexies. None other than Qua Bay Booker. And with what that do you do, coach? Go for two or you kick it? It looks like they're sending Rob Abrams out there. It looks like they're going to take the one. Well, I'm here to tell you, man, Rob Abrams, he's got a leg. I know he does. Uh, I was fortunate enough to coach these seniors. Uh, I was their head freshman football coach when they were freshmen. And I'm going to tell you what, this is a fantastic group of young men. I know what these guys can do, and I know Robert Abrams can and will and is going to make this kick, folks. I've seen him do it many times on the gridiron. Oh, I snap, fall on it. Well, bad snap negated that one. So with that being said, the Prexies miss the chance to put some more points on the board, but they are up 20 to 14 right now in the third quarter. 
with three, three minutes 58. and 58 seconds left in the ball game. Well, Coach, I think we've answered here in the third quarter. Sir, what do you think? Absolutely. That's exactly what we wanted. Two quick scores here. Reclaim a lead. Put it in the defense's hands and see what they can do with Hart. Well, and Coach, you bring up Hart again, and it seems like the Prexies have an answer for Hart, but does Mount Vernon have an answer for the Prexies' answer for Hart? That's the question, sir. Yes, sir. How many more uh, bad puns can we make using Hart, by the way? It's got to be a Motley Crue reference in there somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe uh, a wrestling reference. Wasn't there a family of uh, yes. hearts that wrestled? Brett the Hitman. Yeah, yeah. the Hitman Hart. Absolutely. Booker after scoring the touchdown on the kickoff. Up man goes ahead and falls on it at about the 34 or 35 yard line. Based upon the last couple uh, kickoffs by the Prexies, I think that's a smart move by him right there. Kick it to their fullback on uh, kickoff and uh, keep it low so he's got no chance but to fall on it. And right now, uh, Prexies have a pretty good field position. You know, they got the ball, Mount Vernon's got the ball in the 35, so uh, we'll see if they have an answer here, sir. Absolutely. They break the huddle. Good old fashioned eye back set, coach. Good old vanilla right here, sir. We'll see what they do with this. Little pulling guard there. That's uh, nothing there but a little bit of a counter there, sir. Noah Cornbread Thompson once again on the tackle. Well, Coach, who was that on the carry? That was our good friend, Mr. Hart. The Hitman Hart, right? So Mount Vernon picks up five yards here. We'll see if they go back to the well once again. And here we are on Ibex once again. I'm willing to bet we're going to see a guard pull, and we're going to see what we saw last play, folks. Nope, no guard pull there. Just good old-fashioned isolation play. Big on big there, folks. And the Prexies have an answer for it. You got to think a guy like Hart, though, who is playing such a fantastic game, he's got to start getting tired, coach. Absolutely. Mentioned his name several times. It looked like Ray Candell was the first guy to shed a block there and snatch him up. Hey, the candy man could on that one, right, coach? Yes, sir. All right, so here we go. We got third and four, it says on the scoreboard, but... Uh, from what I'm looking at, Coach, that looks like a solid third and five, but what do I know? That's a long four. That's a long, probably the longest four in the history of mankind, sir. Prexy stiffen up. We got a little bootleg play action here. And the quarterback slips free. He throws it. He's got seven open. Well, and you know what has to happen on that is uh, T.J. Jefferson got caught looking in the backfield. He thought the quarterback got sacked and he was able to break free and throw the ball downfield. That's just one of the benefits, again, of a mobile quarterback. You're able to extend plays. You're able to let your uh, playmakers get open in space and dangerous things can happen. Man. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the wide receiver there just slipped behind T.J. Jefferson. Uh, T.J. got caught looking in the backfield. But make no mistake about it, the Praxis will stiffen up and get a stop here, folks. It was a big passing play by Mount Vernon in the first half that really switched that momentum here, though. So yeah, you got a point, keep, Coach. Something to keep an eye on. You got a point. Mount Vernon calls a timeout. And during this timeout, we're going to take a break. You are watching the Marion Harding Presidents versus Jackets, a Marion Harding High School Telecom production. Being nice. And we are back here. We have the 
Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets on the Prexy 16 yard line, staring into the end zone. The Prexies could really make a statement here by stiffening up and getting a stop. The Prexies have been dynamite, Coach, through all of the third quarter, but gave up one big play there. And as you mentioned before, Coach, I mean, yeah, TJ, I said TJ Jefferson got caught looking in the backfield, but boy, howdy, you can only cover someone for so long and you can only move around so much, and the quarterback just made a play there. Absolutely. And the Prexies. Looks like Harding's going to return a favor there on a encroachment call. So now what was a 15 yard trip into the end zone now becomes a 10 yard trip in the end zone with a five yard free gift from the Marion Harding presidents. First and five here, two minutes left in the quarter. And we're gonna go back to the well here. Not this time. Not this time, the Prexy stiffened up. Well, and you know, here's the thing coach, uh, offensive coordinators sometimes can go back to the well a little bit too much. They think this works, so let's do it again. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And that time it didn't, we kept the quarterback contained. Absolutely, Drake Fashione on the uh, tackle for loss there. Crucial play for loss, obviously. And let me tell you, I have that kid in my homeroom. He's a big kid. You're not getting away from him. Well, you know, I've uh, went to one of the football practices here recently and I hadn't seen Drake in a couple months. and. Uh, I want to know what that boy's eating because I quit growing about in the eighth grade, coach, and I want to get a little bit bigger, you know, a little bit taller. Yeah, that's the curse of the wrestlers. Hart off tackle. The Prexies are there, a host of Prexies. We've got number three, number eight, number two, and number 34. Coach, help me out with who those youngsters are. Harris, Jefferson. <laughs> And Robert Abrams all combining in on that tackle. I think we saw a number 34 on that too. Yes, if my eyes do. 34, Jacob Furness. Jake Furness, all right. The Fern man on the tackle. It's good to see that young man out there playing some football. Once again, another fine young man that I had the pleasure of coaching when he was a freshman in high school. And a big play here, 30 ticks left in the third quarter. Absolutely, coach. Third and seven. We gotta make a statement here. The Harding 13. Flatbacks. Quarterback rolls to the right. Oh! And he overthrows. Overthrows. You know, the coverage is pretty good there, but uh, boy, if that ball was just a little bit lower, we're looking at six on the scoreboard for the uh, Yellow Jackets. Nonetheless, they say abs or almost only counts in horseshoes. And hand grenades. Absolutely. I found out that it almost counts and uh, almost only counts in horseshoes. Thank goodness I've never had to figure out if it counts or not in hand grenades, sir. Absolutely. Well, let's see what the Yellow Jackets do here, folks. They got fourth and seven. It should be noted that they can still get a first down here, folks. They can still get a first down. So Prexy's got to play smart. They got to play perfect and. Uh, just buckle down here, folks, and make a stop with 18 ticks left Daniels, in the third quarter. Hart and Gregory, the quarterback out there, they are definitely going for it here. And we got to stop, Coach Keplinger. We got to stop. With 10 ticks left in the third quarter, we get a stop. Coming off the field excited is number 12. Quave Booker. Comes off the field excited, folks. He was uh, walking on air or walking on sunshine like that old 80s song says. And what do you know? How many times have we called Quave Booker's name tonight? Well, I'm going to tell you what, man. Quave Booker is a fantastic young man, Coach. Am I correct in that he is a sophomore? I do believe so. Well, folks, I'm going to tell you what. We're going to be calling that young man's name quite a bit in the next nine games this year and uh, into the future. Coach Slater's pretty amped up on the sidelines. Coach Wessler, he of Division II Heisman fame, a Heisman finalist in uh, Division II, sends the uh, youngsters back on the field, gives them a play, and let's see what the president's offense has to say. First and 10 from the 10 here. All right. Oh, first and 10 from the 10. I like that. Oh, little shovel pass. Little shovel pass. Little pitch to Jefferson. Good block by Robert Abrams. Abrams gets a block. <laughs> 
And we got a late flag there. And that was a hold against the Prexies. That, that flag was a little bit late there. A little bit late there, but the ref's down there and I'm up here, so he must have saw something I didn't, folks. Coach Brady's not happy about that call. Neither is Coach Wessler. But because we are staring at an end zone, it's only gonna be half the distance to the goal. So it's not as painful as a um, penalty as you know normally as far as a 10 yard penalty goes. However, we're a lot closer to uh, our end zone. Prexy's back in the huddle. All right, coach, the most important thing that Prexy's got to do down here is protect the ball. And with that final tick, the third quarter is over. With the third quarter over, the Prexies lead 20 to 14. We're going to take a short break here. You are watching the Marion Harding Presidents versus the Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets, a Harding Telecom production. Students in grades K through 12 living within the Marion City Schools District. We offer a home-based online learning environment with the benefit of one-on-one -on -one teacher support and individualized instruction. Our flexible learning schedules provide opportunities for students to work at their own pace. Computer and internet service is provided. The Marion City Digital Academy is open five days a week and is staffed by certified teachers. We are located at 360 Pennsylvania Avenue next to George Washburn Elementary. Call us at 740-223-3882. Marion City Schools inspiring a community of achievers. And folks, we are back. And Coach Keplinger, we are now in the fourth quarter where the Prexies have a 20 to 14 lead. And I think if I were to write a headline or a story about the third quarter, I think I would say the Prexies dominated, sir. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely, gave up the one big play when the quarterback was able to roll out there, but otherwise, I mean, anytime you can hang points on the board multiple times and keep the other team off, you're doing something right on the defensive end. But you know what, Coach? Like we said, football is a four-quarter game, and we can win the third quarter all we want, but if we don't come alive in the fourth quarter, this game could very well end up in the L column as opposed to the W column. First and 15 from our five-yard line to start the fourth quarter. Little screen pass there underneath, and the Prexies make up the lost yardage. Looks like they pick up about maybe six yards there, Coach. Sayer passed the ball to Gabe Detweiler there. Screen brings it what it would be before the penalty. What I'm here to tell you right now, Coach, uh, I've watched a lot of Harding football games in my life, and I do believe this might be the most I've ever seen the Prexies pass. Just haven't been able to get the running game going too much, you know, Coach? That's I mean, there's been some bright spots, don't get me wrong, but uh, we've relied on a lot of screens and a lot of... Uh, a lot of different uh, passing formations and whatnot this game. And that but it's been be, working, Coach. That may be something we see change throughout the year, too. Um, a very old or a very high school old juniors and seniors often, but not a ton of starts up front for yeah. Coach Stone's guys. Yeah, yeah, Coach, you bring up a fantastic point in the sense that uh, – we got a lot of seniors on the line. We got a lot of guys on there that have played a lot of football throughout their careers. However, they haven't had a lot of starts. I think there's something definitely to be said for that. Well, and you know, Coach, you're, you're, you're right. There's something to be said for that. There's something about gelling. There's something about coming together as a unit. But uh, Coach Bobby Stone, as we know, is uh, – is a very meticulous man. He's a very, very hard worker. So if there's ever anybody who's going to get those young men to come together and believe in themselves, it's Coach Stone. Absolutely. Master motivator. And an Otterbein Cardinal. Yeah, he's an Otterbein guy. Hey, and I also saw the other night on uh, uh, Ryan Sayers' mom on Facebook post the other night that Ryan had uh, the offensive line over for some stakes. So, I mean, if that doesn't make those guys come together, uh, I don't know what does. Quarterback feeding them steaks? Holy smokes. Oh, that, that's just doing it right. Too many si times you see it in the, in the uh, big boys playing on Sundays in the NFL. Quarterbacks blaming their linemen. You know, you're going to count on them as a skill player and as a quarterback to take care of their assignments. 
Oh, that looked like a face mask to me, but it was not. Ryan Sayer got away from what was a dangerous tackle there and uh, saw nowhere to throw the ball. Well, Coach, uh, ball on the five-yard line, uh, third and forever for the Prexies. you got to believe that they're going to play it safe here, try to keep the ball on the ground and just go for a punt, sir. Absolutely. Hopefully change the field a little bit. Give their uh, punter another cushion, another couple yard cushion here before we do have to punt. Well, and football is so much a game of field position. And right now, field position certainly does not favor the Prexes. Incomplete pass there. Contrary to what I thought, the Prexes do not keep it on the ground. Fourth down. down and what seems to be an obvious punting situation here for Harding. Well, and you know, Coach, believe it or not, the Prexes have only punted once today, and that one punt was uh, almost blocked. In fact, remember, I thought uh, the roughing the Sayre had been roughed a little bit. Uh huh. So right now, it's extremely important the Prexes get this kick off more than anything. Good snap, good kick. And. And like I, I just do. spoke, that was a safety. <laughs> Off the edge, that was a safety. However, the good thing is, is it's two points, coach, not six. Two points and the ball, but Harding still leads 20 to 16 with 10, 12 left in the fourth quarter. Well, and I'm telling you right now, coach, whoever the, uh, whoever the coach of punt team is probably has an ulcer right now. Two punts. One almost blocked, and the other one blocked, which results in two points. As I said in the first quarter, special teams, tip of the spear. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why they're called special teams, coach. Special things can happen, and special people play on special teams. And right there, Mount Vernon just made something special happen. But the good thing is, coach, if there is one silver lining in that cloud, it is this. It was only two points, sir. It is, and as you said, much better than six. Yes, sir. And for those of you guys who don't know the rules of football, whenever there is a safety as such, the uh, team that uh, gave up the safety, now has to kick the ball from their own 20 yard line. So essentially, we, we kick off the ball, but we do so from the 20 yard line, which is going to give the Yellow Jackets better field position. So right now, coverage on this is very, 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 very important. This will be a huge drive for Harding's defense here, coach. Absolutely, coach. Uh, they came to play last series. So, you know, you gotta remember the most important play is the next play, so let's come to play. Oh, and it, it goes between his legs. It, it takes a Prexy bounce. We just got to get a tackle there. And, folks, he gets the edge. And he fumbles the ball out of bounds. I believe that was returned by number seven, Caden Daniels. He's been dangerous at the wide receiver spot so far tonight. Obviously showing off that speed asset there on uh, kick return. Well, Coach, and like I said, sometimes those busted plays like that where the ball goes through legs or something like that can sometimes become big plays. You got guys flying down there. They're focusing on the ball, and uh, sometimes they don't just motor down, and they kind of run past the action, and that's pretty much what happened there, folks. With that big return, it is first and 10, Mount Vernon from the Harding 21-yard line. There are nine minutes, 58 seconds left in this contest this evening. Well, the important thing is the Prexies forget about that play because, like I've said many times in this broadcast, the most important play is the next play. Hart the ball carrier. Hart grinds out what looks like about a four-yard gain there, Coach. And a cloud of dust. Yes, sir. Woody Hayes would be proud, sir. Second and five for Mount Vernon. Should be noted the Prexies once again still have the lead here with nine and some change left in the third quarter. 
The Yellow Jackets have second and five on their own 15 yard line. I believe Hart's gonna get the ball here, coach. What do you think? If my eyes don't deceive me, I would say so. And there we go. Pitch left Hart to Hart. The toss. And a slew of Prexies. What we'll call the president's cabinet takes down Mr. Hart for no gain. Tyreek Harris, uh, sued the PA announcer, Mr. Brent Gornflow says made that tackle, but uh, I'm gonna say that was everybody, sir. Absolutely, great team tackling there. Well, coach, based upon what I've seen, I bet we're gonna see a little, uh, little play action pass here, sir. See if we can catch the Prexy sleeping. Set him up, a heart healthy diet on the first couple downs there. Absolutely. And playoff, or Absolutely. play action set up. Heart healthy diet. Let's see what we do here, folks. And we Andy get the gets the ball. Heart. And a slew of Prexy. Who is stood up short of the first down, I do believe. And looks like coming out of the uh, play there is. Uh, do believe if my eyes don't deceive me, that's Robert Abrams with the ball. Uh, mm -hmm. he thought he had it, but the refs are like, uh, no suit for you, the play is dead. Fourth All right, and so four. here we go, folks, here we go. This play right here, there's many plays in a ball game that could make a game, but this play could be it, folks. This could be a defining moment right here for the 2016 Harding Prexies. Can they get a stop here, fourth and four, with the Malvern and Yellow Jackets knocking at the door? Will it be Hart? Will it be a play action pass? What will they do? And it's Hart! And it's no and he's good! Short. And it's no good! And it is no good! The defense, ladies and gentlemen, they brought their lunchbox, they brought their hard hat, they came to play, Coach Keplinger. They oh, came to play. Absolutely, and Coach Slater meeting his defense there at the yard line. He's standing on the 20 pump. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, man, uh, Coach Brady is, uh, he's a happy man down there, you know? Can't say enough about what Coach Brady has done for uh, these youngsters and what he's done for this football program and uh, just 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 a very great guy was one of my high school football coaches I actually coached with him coached for him and uh, think the world of that guy so here we go baby here we go offense let's get her done 20 to 16, seven minutes and 21 ticks left on the clock. Let's see what the Prexy offense can do here, folks. Sayer goes play action. He caught his own pass. A little Brett Favre remnants there. Wow. I, uh, he caught his own pass, folks. I just, I think I've seen it all now. Yeah, yeah. it looked like he had number 42 Colin Hill out in the flats there. Uh, and I don't know if the hit jarred the ball loose or just happened to slip, but well, he was fortunate enough to catch his own pass there. Otherwise, it would have been a dangerous one. When he was throwing the ball, Coach, like you said, uh, I think he got hit. And as he got hit, the ball kind of fluttered, and his body got pushed into the ball fluttering. So thank goodness he caught that and it wasn't picked off or maybe even caught a fumble. Absolutely. Second Not every day a quarterback catches his own pass. Well done, sir. Well done. And Ryan Sayer loses the ball. And just like that, the Prexy defense is back on the field. The game swings the way of Mount Vernon yet again. Okay, folks, the Prexy's defense has answered the bell the last two times. Let's see if they can do it again here, Coach Keplinger. Coach Slater giving his defense some words of encouragement. And after the turnover, it's going to be first and 10 on the Marion Harding 12-yard line for Mount Vernon. 
Six and a half minutes left in this contest. You know, the hardest thing with a turnover like that is the defense didn't get a lot of time to rest. Oh, no, no, no water break there. Ball goes to Hart. Prexies are having none of it. And they stand them up for a gain of maybe two, Coach? Maybe two? Two. I think, believe that's a two-yard gain. Looks there. like Fassione and Abrams were the first two, or the bottom two I saw come off that pile. Well, once again, the defense has to come to play, folks. The defense has to come to play. I believe we have a official's timeout. We have a malfunction with equipment. And uh, looks like that was number 21 with a little helmet snafu there, uh, Seth Tyler. Mal Vernon once again in an eye back set. Let's see if we're gonna see a little bit more of Hart here. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And that's why they're giving the ball to that young man. He can make things happen. The wheels keep turning. Hart with what looks like a six yard gain. It is now second down, or I'm sorry, rather third down with two to go. Ball on the four yard line. It'd be great to see a turnover here, Coach. Without a doubt. Five minutes left in the ball game and ticking. Hard to no dice. And is met at the line of scrimmage by a slew of Harding defenders. Off the edge there, Coach. They put the Candyman on the edge there, and he... Uh, he came crashing down like a bat out of Hades and made the tackle there. So third and what now looks like four, Coach. Yes, sir, fourth and two. All right, let's see if the D can buckle up here, Coach. Excuse me, fourth and four as the scoreboard's now indicating tackle for loss on the last play. So uh, Hart looks a little winded, Coach. Squatting down there. Hart going to get the ball. They're going to throw a little play action pass here. I don't know, folks, but if you're watching this game, cross your fingers and pray that the Prexy all defense can come through here. Defense, 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 defense. And it looks like number 33 and goes into just the end zone. Like that. Mount Vernon takes the lead. However, folks, there's three minutes and 57 seconds left in the ball game. So now the score will stand. Mount Vernon 22, the President's 20. You gotta believe that Mount Vernon is gonna go for one point here to give themselves a three point lead, which would make, mean the Prexies would have to score at least a field goal to tie the ball game. Extra point attempt. It's blocked again! TJ Jefferson. TJ Jefferson for the second time this evening. TJ Dynamite Jefferson. Good special teams play twice by that speedster off the edge. And how big of a that proved to be, Coach Schneider? Well, Coach, I'm going to tell you what. The Presidents haven't had much luck in the kicking game tonight. But that right there gives us a chance, if we have to, to win this ball game with a kick. So that was a huge play right there, Coach. That was a huge play. Absolutely. Now, the most important thing right now is Ryan Sarah needs to shake off that last series and do what he does best. Be nice to see a good return in here out of Nicholas, though, and TJ. They've still been kicking to him all evening. Yeah, they have. They really, really have. Well, you know, the Prexies still have... Uh, Two timeouts, there's three minutes and 57 seconds left. The Prexies need to put together a good old fashioned methodical drive to uh, put this game away, you know? 
The Prexies pull this one out. It'll be a great game, but the story of tonight is the Prexies have just made a little too many mistakes, Coach. And the kick here with 3.57 left in the game. Middlesworth wants to cut left, has a blocker. Cuts back right. Nick now has a convoy. Middlesworth goes to the coach. right. He's going, coach. And he gets to the 50-yard line. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Coach. There was a crack back block about on the 20-yard line back there that made me nervous. I thought that ref was going to throw a flag, sir. And, uh, well, I think I spoke too soon because that's exactly what just happened. Another late flag from this officiating staff. Woo! Tell you what, man. They're going to have to go to the uh, laundry mat because they've been throwing a lot of laundry tonight. So what was a good... Return is now negated. Uh, the Prexies lose uh, 30 yards. They did have the ball on the 50 yard line and now they're sitting there at the 20. Three minutes and 41 seconds left in the ball game. Coach Wessler in the huddle talking to his boys. Sends them out on the field. Three forty-one left in this contest. Presidents take over, eighty yards from their first win of the season. Go to Jefferson and space. Jefferson, he's got a corner. Tries to come back, steps out of bounds. There, still a very decent game for TJ, and enough for a first down. Well, you know, coach, there's plenty of time left in the ball game. TJ is trying to make plays happen, but you certainly want that clock to keep moving. You know. Great play by T.J. Jefferson, though. You get your speed on the edge because really right now, Mount Vernon hasn't had an answer for that all night. The only thing that stopped us, Coach Kep, is ourselves. Prex is in an eye backfield. Little G play. Looks like a pickup of about. Looks like five yards. Five. Check that, maybe four. Decent spot as well, it appears. Absolutely. Prexies go back to a single backfield set. Colin Hill's running out on the field. Gets set. TJ Jefferson has the ball. He turns it up. And another first down for Harding. They enter Mount Vernon territory on the field. As well. well, Coach, and what started out as a drive that didn't it didn't look as good because of that uh, little disheartening penalty there. The Prexies have put together three really solid offensive plays. A uh, little bit of uh, TJ Dynamite Jefferson and a uh, little Colin Hill, I believe, on the uh, second play there. Pre oh, I'm sorry, Gabe Detweiler. Prexies back in an eye backfield. Got to believe we're going to see Gabe or Colin with the ball. Lowers a shoulder there, another decent game. Well, folks, and like I said, that is just a good old-fashioned Harding staple right there. That is nothing more than G. That is the play that uh, Harding has been running for many, many, many years. Coach, I, I know I ran that play in high school. <laughs> I called that play as a coach many, many times, and uh, I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? That's correct. TJ Jefferson in the backfield. Play Sayer action, with the play set up action. here. Sayer it. shades Got right. Run it. Goes long, it looks like he's got money oh. down downfield. And Nicholas, oh! Oh! Well, two refs saw it hit the ground, so I gotta believe that uh, that was the right call. The, uh, the, the referee who had eyes on it saw it hit the ground, so. Uh, even though I didn't like that call, I great effort say it was on right. Nick Middlesworth there. He's he's going on a streak on the left side of the field. He goes all the way across to the right sideline to try to make that play. That's yep. a heck of an effort. 
Well, you know, Coach, when I see Middlesworth speed like that, I can't help but think of that fantastic catch that uh, Billy Hamilton made for the old Red Legs the other night in center field. Only 20 games out of first. Well, yeah, the Reds aren't playing real well as uh, new principal uh, Mr. Trisler and I talked about tonight, but you gotta love watching a guy like Billy Hamilton play the good old ball game. Absolutely. Football, soccer, football, speed, thrills. Yes, it does. The whole crowd's a little excited here. We're all clapping our hands and shouting offense, and uh, right now the Prexy faithful believe, folks. The Prexy faithful believe. Prexy's come out of the huddle. We've got an eye backfield. I've got to believe we're probably going to see a little bit of that off tackle G play again with uh, Colin Hill leading up through, clearing a lane for Gabe Detweiler as the guard pulls to knock someone in the teeth. Goes to Noah Thompson. He sheds a tackle and gets enough. It does appear for a first down. Cornbread on the catch. And there's a face mask, Coach. There's a face mask on Mount Vernon. I think it's on Mount Vernon at least. I hope it is and not on us, sir. I see Coach. Face mask Mount Vernon. Up in his hand. That's going to turn a five-yard play into a 21-yard. Well, I saw Gene the Mean Machine Rucker down there. Defensive line coach clapping his hands. So uh, that told me right there that that piece of laundry was in favor of the good old black and red. That's a lot of energy for a man with a newborn at home. Good for him. <laughs> he does have a newborn. He's probably not getting a lot of sleep right now, you think? Maybe a little slap happy. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, and another flag. And it looks like another face mask. Another flag, another face mask. And folks, Mount Vernon right now is uh, they're coming a little, little unglued and discombobulated in front of our eyes. You know, they've made two big mistakes back to back that have given the Prexies what will turn out to be about 30 yards, free 30 yards. Should also note while we're waiting here that uh, we have some fantastic youngsters up here filming this from Telecom, which is a fan, fantastic program. One of the great things that Marion City Schools provides for our youngsters that nobody else in this community does. That's why we are a great school district, folks. First 10 from the Mount Vernon 14. I backs Coach Keplinger. What do you think? Our last two runs have been to TJ here. And it's TJ again. It's a gain of about three. Yeah, I think that's three, Coach. Yep. That's what our scoreboard indicates. You see a cloud of dust on that one? <laughs> Three yards in the cloud of dust, <laughs> proverbially speaking. Somewhere Woody Hayes is smiling, folks. Another pass Noah out to Thompson. Thompson. <laughs> Completes the pass and gets out of bounds. Just like that, the Prexies are knocking on the door. And enough for a first down. First and goal. They keep a they keep a knocking and they're gonna get in, coach. They keep a knocking and they're gonna get in. Coach Brady calls a timeout, or Mount Vernon, I believe, calls a timeout. Still leave the Prexies with two. The ups and downs, the late game drama, this right here is to start our season. The exact reminder of why we love Friday Night Football. <laughs> well, you know, Coach, you bring up a good point. I'm going to tell you what right now, folks. There is nothing better in this world than Friday Night Football. There is nothing more that can teach our youngsters about life, can teach them about adversity than Friday Night Football, and quite frankly, high school sports in general. Coach Kevlinger, I think it's safe to say that you and I are the men we are today because of the sports we played in high school, sir. Could you agree with me on that one? Undoubtedly, one of my biggest mentors growing up, Harding grad Doug Short, now coaching wrestling at Otterbein University, instilled those life lessons in me, you know? No substitute for learning on the fly like that, learning that adversity. Nothing like a Doug Short reference, baby. Yeah, a legend, true. a local legend. You gotta love Doug Short. 
Okay, here we go, folks. Let's see if the Prexies can answer and punch this in. We have a two tight set, one back in the backfield and two flankers out wide. Sayer drops back. And just like that, the Prexies turn the ball over. What looked like the game winner, what looked like what could have put us on top, now could have just cost us the ball game, folks. We have 55 seconds, 50 seconds left, two timeouts. We'll wait and see what happens here, folks. By no stretch of the imagination is this one over. Our boys need to hold their heads high. Series to play still. You gotta believe right now that um, Mount Vernon's gonna take some knees. Uh, the Prexies do have two timeouts. So all hope is not lost yet, folks. It's a false start penalty. Prexis call a timeout. 44 ticks left in the ball game. there on the tackle. You know, coach, whatever the outcome of this game is, the Prexies played hard tonight, but uh, had too many missed opportunities, sir. Too many mistakes. Uh, as you said earlier in this game, Coach Schneider, it comes down to who makes the least amount of mistakes in this game sometimes. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. Absolutely. And, uh, I think regards to the outcome of this game, the Prexy's got a lot to reflect on and uh, got a lot to clean up. But hey, the good thing is, Coach, is uh, we play nine, sir. We play nine more after this one. So nine there's going to be plenty of time to right the ship. And an MOAC title to look for. Absolutely, Coach. And uh, I think uh, from what I've seen on the field right now, I don't know if there's a team in the MOAC that's going to have as much speed and talent as the Harding Prexy, sir. With you there, Coach, 100% in agreement. Well, and you know, let's not, you know, once again, I'm not making an excuse for the Prexies, but let's not forget that this was a team that throttled us last year, and you know, we are a couple of silly mistakes away from leading this ball game right now. And folks, Hart just got the first down, and uh, that's the ball game, folks. No matter what happens, uh, Prexies can call a timeout. There's 36 ticks left in the ball game, and just like that, what looked like it was going to end a promising night in the W column for the Prexies uh, ends as a loss. And uh, once again tonight, we'll go down as a night, Coach Keplinger, of, uh, of a lot of missed opportunities. But uh, I'm going to say this, Coach. Uh, these young men, they played with heart. They played tough. And, uh, you know, let's not forget that uh, – these are kids, you know? These are kids, and uh, everybody makes mistakes, sir. Undoubtedly. And played hard, didn't give up, and as you said, we erased between seasons a 30-point deficit between these two results. And sure, there are no moral victories. There are no moral victories, sir, but... Uh, but something to hang a hat on. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Well, just like that, folks, game one is in the books. A disappointing loss for the Marion Harding Presidents in a uh, game that was exciting and could have went either way, but unfortunately ended up in the loss column for our beloved Harding Prexies. Thank you for watching tonight. Uh, thank you, Telecom, for putting on a great uh, show. And uh, 
We'll see you next week versus Lima Senior. This is uh, Todd Schneider and Corey Keplinger signing out. Thank you for watching a Harding High School Marion Harding Telecom production.